No. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Public Affairs Forum at the John F. Kennedy School of Government. My name is Phyllis Simpkins. I'm Director of Alumni Affairs at the Kennedy School. I've just been drafted from the audience to <laughs> substitute um, as for the introductions tonight. This evening's program is sponsored by the Institute of Politics and the Harvard Summer School. I think most of you know there are only two major political parties in the United States, but tonight we're going to hear from a third, a Capitol Hill office party that has been going on for four years, <laughs> the Capitol Steps. Like most things on Capitol Hill, they've spun out of control. Their popularity has grown at a rate roughly proportionate to the national debt, although the group denies any cause and effect relationship. Since they began, the Capitol Steps have been on NBC Nightly News, CBS Morning News, and ABC's Nightline. They have been written up in the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and Newsweek, among other publications. The Washingtonian Magazine says the Capitol Steps have a legitimate claim to Mark Russell's vacated throne as Washington's reigning political satirist. They make regular public appearances at Shea Artiste, formerly the bread oven in Washington's theater district. They still work on Capitol Hill and they write all their own material. Now you know why none of your letters to your congressman ever get answered on time. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. Here they are, the Capitol Steps. <laughs> Seven grand for my coffee pot. Only seven grand for this coffee pot. Nails, five hundred bucks. Nails, five hundred bucks. Screws, fifty clams. Screws, fifty clams. Screws, fifty clams. Screws, fifty clams. At service star, it's 15 cents. No hanky panky, nothing funny about our special prices. But before we bolt down all this money, we have to find a nut. That's me. I will buy your wonderful hammer. Such a tool, it's awfully nice. But we shouldn't call it a hammer. A to justify the price, a nail insertion steel diva. Who will buy our nail insurgent? On the south side of the Kremlin, down along by Lenin's tomb, there's a guy. Young, he's upwardly mobile and so precisely groomed. He got a custom razor haircut. He got a eyes hot sweater too. He's a real photo catcher. When he met Maggie Thatcher, she loved his Gucci shoe. He is Garby Garby Shaw. Now you can check any check in. Ooh, they love that man. They love Garby. Garbage off. He's the coolest dude since ooh, stand off. I wonder what he's scheming off. We'll stick it to that Teflon flower. Garby. Garbage off. He the biggest bang since my. Who coughs? <laughs> Thank you. 
Tippo, ruled of the Congress, ruled of the Congress, and he got his way, but Tippo doesn't rule it today. Oh no, because Reagan runs the Congress, runs the Congress, and that's why we say that Tippo doesn't rule it today. You think that our song is all done? Well, maybe we've hardly begun. Cause the Reagan runs the Reagan, runs the Reagan. There are those who say that Reagan runs the Congress today. Wall Street runs the Reagan, runs the Reagan, and the Reagan too. So Wall Street runs the Congress. What's new? Volker runs the Wall Street and the Reagan and the Reagan too. Yes, Volker runs the Congress. He do. Inflation runs the Volker and the Wall Street. inflation runs inflation so then you know why all tippo rules the congress today C O L A cost of living adjustment yay I'd like to teach the world to bring perfect equities but otherwise just give me my cost of living please the real deal. i'd like to see inflation pause in our economy my cost of living adjustment clause can bring immunity that's the way it is cola and they wanted to stay keep a cola what the world wants today oh yeah it's a real deal we're set for the rest of us Tell them the real thing. The government's going broke, and we just can't afford to keep a cola. So we're now moving to. Oh, the Uncola. No Who's going to pick the tab? <laughs> oh, Nancy. Fit the proper pattern of a pure and princely president Plainly at the White House, I'm a perfect present resident If O'Neill says I'm a heel, I don't know what the hell he means My empty rooms are candied with decanters full of jelly beans It's nice to be in Harvard, so school has fine amenities We're only here because we weren't invited by the Kennedys <laughs> If you and me should disagree, then you will soon be clobbered, son Don't have a fit, you must admit I'm better than Pat Robertson. John, have a fit, you must admit he's better than Pat Robertson. Have a fit, you must admit he's better than Pat Robertson. Have a fit, you must admit I am much better than Kurt Volheim. Yahoo! I'm quite at home with only biblical creationists, but not with lady liberals or women's liberationists. Plainly in the White House, I'm a perfect present resident. I am the thoroughest flower and first lady to the president. Lady in the White House, she's a perfect present resident. She I'm Mrs. Gorbachev, I am first lady of the Kremlin. Remember Jackie Kennedy, it's her I am resembling. In Politburo, I am reason Gorby have such easy luck. Cause all the other Kremlin wives are built just like a diesel truck. Let Nancy Reagan do good deeds for every little charity. I'll simply smile and dress in style. You'd better be polite to me or Gorby knock your cracker off. Just with Anya Tanya, he will treat you just like Sakharov. It is just with Anya Tanya, he will treat you just like Sakharov. Just with Anya Tanya, he will treat you just like Mrs. 
Gorbachev, I am First Lady of the Kremlin. Remember Jackie Kennedy, it's her she is resembling. She's Mrs. Gorbachev, she is First Lady of the Kremlin. I am the very model of a modern major president at taking long vacations. I am very hesitant. It's very nice to sacrifice. I'd like to slice your safety nets. That's what these guys advise who fly the skies aboard their private jets. I'm ending wasteful spending. Your position will be taxable. I have a hunch your three martini lunch will soon be taxable. I reckon that's a Democrat. Your income he would take away. I'll use again my veto pen. So go ahead and make my day. You know how much we both are touched by all this popularity, but now back to work so we can bring you more prosperity. In 88, if all your dates all seem rejectable, of any condition, I would then be re-electable. summit convenes I jump off and swim ashore to see Superdome Go tell Gorbachev that he can buzz off This Russian sailor don't want to go home Now sailor do not defect Take time and please reflect about your family and friends you're leaving back home I went on a whim for recreational swim. He's very persuasive. I better go home. Poor Bee Boobala. Look, another of our defectors has decided to come home. Why, who? Why, it's Vitali. Vitali Yurshenko. <laughs> well, well, hello, Vitali. Well, hello, Vitali. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. They was thugs, fellas gave me drugs, fellas, but I tried to double cross them, so I went along. We're glad you stopped straying, better start praying if you want to see your family again. Well. Well, fellas, find him an empty cell, fellas. Vitaly will never go away. Said too much to the CIA. Vitaly will never go away again. <laughs> Excuse me, I hate to interrupt, but I'm sitting over there and I realize find a good lawyer. A breathing lawyer would be fine. I don't need a good one. I mean, I mean I, I'm not in the right place or something. Excuse me, you're trying to tell me you're a lawyer or something, but I don't know you. What, what firm are you with? Laws or us. <laughs> it's 
special summer sale, file one suit, get one free. Okay, I'm going to ask him one question to see if he knows what he's doing. All right, uh, okay, Mr. Attorney, how do you start a small business in the 1980s? You start a big business and then you wait. On my first day of business, my lawyer said to me, you must comply with the EEOC. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, right? That's right. Fine. On my second day of business, my lawyer said to me, You must train two teenage boys. To comply with this EEOC thing. Correct. On my third day of business, my lawyer said to me, You must speak three different tongues. To the two teenage boys? To comply with the EEOC. On my fourth day of business, my lawyer said to me, You must fill out four federal forms. In three different tongues? To train two teenage boys. To comply with the EEOC. Now, these private sector types, they pick it up eventually. On my fifth day of business, my lawyer said to me, You must hire five pink women to fill out four federal forms in three times to train two teenage boys to comply with the EEOC. On my sixth day... Oh, wait a second. Who is this mob over here? My staff. <laughs> On my sixth day of business, my lawyer said to me, There are six accountants counting five pink women who fill out for federal forms in three times to train two teenage boys to comply with the EEOC. On my se Wait a second. Who is paying for this mob over here? You are. By, by the hour? By the minute. On my 12th day of business, my lawyer said to me, come on, let's finish this. <laughs> there are 12 judges judging. 11 administrators ruling. 10 counsels suing. 9 arbitrators talking. 8 bureaucrats walking. 7 enforcers forcing. 6 accountants counting. Are ripping, enforcers are resniffing, and accountants are recounting. So I fired the five pink women and ripped up those federal forms in foul tongue, untrained the teenage boys, and fired a cartridge at the EEOC. suffered for my music. Now it's your turn. Oh, once upon a time you felt the hurt, wore a tie-dyed shirt, slept in the dirt. Didn't you? People used to shout, say, watch out, you're bound to sell out, but you thought that they were all kidding you. Talk like your dad. Now you wear madras plaid and say, Do you want to barbecue? Oh, how does it feel? Oh, 
just joined the SDS, you were so impressed with Malcolm X. Growing marijuana crops, burning buildings, fighting cops, and having sex. He used to be so enthused by Abby and Eldridge and the language that they use. Now when you see kids march on the evening news, you don't go join them, you got too much to lose, you're conservative now, you got no time for Bobby Seal. them turn the budget books from black ink into red oh one day it will happen when dutch is there no more that's when the economy will cease its fearless roar the dollar it will tumble stocks will fall like rain all our foreign creditors will send us down the drain who then will we turn to will we turn to jack or will we simply wish we had our magic Reagan back? Oh, Dutch the magic Reagan, the country's going bust. As president, this Jackie Kemp has got no magic dust. Dutch the magic Reagan, whatever shall we do? Enough of Jack, we want you back in 1992. <laughs> at my department dreary while I labored weak and weary on a memorandum bleary in some other office chores suddenly I heard a cutting like the sound of scissors shutting then I knew someone was gutting gutting programs for the poor tears welled up and made me sobby poverty my job and hobby then and there I had to lobby lobby loudly for the poor but then I learned what was projected, and my job remained protected. My advice was redirected. Balance, caution, I implored. Cut this much, but cut no more. <laughs> but then I saw an apparition, a Reagan on the television, speaking soft of his decision, his incision for the poor, sparing just the truly needy, he mowed down the newly weedy, shaving anything to CD programs cut right to the core. Cut the geese, not just the gizzard, urged this economic wizard, sharpening the bloody scissors, deep and deeper cuts in store. Skidoos for the widely scattered, band-aids for the badly battered, program plans that really mattered, torn and tattered on the floor. Quote the Reagan, Cut some more. <laughs> then he wrote the Craven budget. Civil service, he could fudge it. Surely no one would begrudge it if he made us workers sore. To save a couple million dollars, rip, he did a few white collars. Lord, you should have heard the hollers when the bodies hit the floor. 
perched on high and never flustered, slips of pink the Reagan mustard. Bureaucratic bones lay clustered, clumped and trodden on the floor. 97 slots retired, 96 were quickly fired. Deep I was in anguish mired, next was me, if any more. Quote the Reagan, cut some more. Dispirited, destroyed, outclouded, bureaucratic battle routed, inbox captured, emptied, outed. Memo shown to me no more. As my last defense is withered, in the Reagan talon slithered, Dagwood had been Mr. Dithered, came the knock upon my door. 97 slots retired, I the 97th fired. It almost seemed he had it wired. Now a padlock's on my door. Both the Reagan, God, no more. Changing cheeks, watch your torts, check your briefs. Bye bye, burger. Liberals will be full of woe when they see who's next to go. Bye bye, Brennan. How I'd like to see them getting bolder. But instead, we're simply getting older. Thurgood Marshall, Lewis Powell, time to throw in the towel. Black man, bye bye. Last one out, turn off the lights. Say goodbye, civil rights. Bye bye, buzzing. Kinky sex has gotta cease. Orders hung, Edwin Meese. Bye bye, Borshan. For my next appointment, you will see a justice even tougher than Scalia. He'll have views just like my own. Welcome, Judge Sliced Alone. Yo, justice! Bye bye. Chase Manhattan's for their loans. We pay back when they say so, but only in pesos and blankets and painted stones. How much can I borrow? Muchisimos. When writing a federal budget, if it doesn't balance, you can fudge it like, like we do. What comes after trillion? Let's go for a zillion. It, it won't matter when we're through. Today. No borrow, no borrow, a mortgage tomorrow. 
President, an important message from the State Department. Oh, no! What a shame! And he was so young. Oh, Georgie, where's George Bush? Golly, Mr. President, what vital diplomatic mission have you got for me today? I have a special undertaking for you, George. Each time a nation is in mourning, my own invitation I decline. Mid-Eastern or Russian, I send Georgie Bush in. I send him to the dirge each time. Who's getting buried in the morning? Moscow, the season is sublime. I travel often to pass by a coffin. I'm always at the dirge on time. I have some comrades I'd like to call. Too bad they're all stuck in the Kremlin wall. When somebody's casket needs adorning, to send someone else would be a crime. George, tuck your shirt in, go shove all the dirt in, and get you to the dirge on time. Have you a message you'd like to tell to Arafat, Gaddafi, or Fidel? Well, tell them how deep would be our mourning if they should be struck down in their prime. When they meet their maker, they'll send Schultz or Baker. I'll send you to their dirge. On flowers I will splurge. I hear there's been a purge. I'm packing on the verge. Oh, Georgie's always at the dirge on time. disease in England the Queen selling drugs I'm almond in LaRouche and I'll make revolution the foe of the stale status quo I will wreak retribution on your constitution your Congress I will overthrow will I be president now just generalissimo we Swords clear in airports will tell you how soon the world will end. Buy flowers for new power. We need Star Wars. It's your friend. Listen, li listen liberals and lawyers, you servants of sin, beltway bandits and lobbying reps. You will all be in prison the moment I win, along with those Steps. We are Linden Russians with wide distribution to every election we'll go. Through your irresolution, we'll make revolution. We ask just one small 
Vote for some Janice or Joe. Vote for some name you don't know. Anybody here from California? and blunders and poor mother nature's mistakes but those are the brakes jeremy jogger professor of golfing and rolfing at ucla why do you say hey hey man the sunshine makes us all laid back and upscale and mellow and gay you like it that way all the flaky people where go they all come from the flaky people call California home. Jane Fonda Hayden, a rich movie maiden, made movies he fame and the rich. They think I'm a stitch in Marin and La Jolla. That's where I'll show you where Bree and Chubbly have their niche and heads are unhitched. Looks like one of my sons. Someday an earthquake will shake them and shock half the state in the ocean, I hear. That's what we all fear, and that is the reason half of the people were running for Senate this year. It's far safer here, all the shaky people, where go they all come from. All the quakey people, call California home. presidency high inflation it bothered me so i asked dave stockman to work for me to try to find solution for the economy he stammered and he stuttered statistically and this is what he said to me well the leper curves in and the phillips curves out with the tax cut the spend cut the feds can rise it's m1 m2 m3 hut and the interest rates in disguise well, the stockman plan brought the deficit, so he had to cut the budget into little bits. By the time he said where all the cuts would be, you people re-elected me. Now, Ron, it's time we got to raise the tax. You go into the woodshed, 40 wax. Your Trojan horse, I call it trickle down. I guess it's time to leave this town. Cause the laugher curves in And the Phillips curves out With the tax cut The spend cut The fence can rise It's M1, M2, M3 Hut 
and the interest rates in these skies. Of budget numbers, I'm an expert cook, and I made a couple million from my recent book. To read his economic mumbo jive cost $27.95. People in the world I see There's only Michael Deaver making more than me The things I told you confidentially I put them all in chapter three Watch the people come in and the people go out Write a book, make a buck x aids of mine, they make a one, two, three, four million bucks I can't wait until I write mine Just look at me, a Yale degree, a PhD in economics. I came to town, look what I found. I didn't count on Reaganomics. I'm really miffed, cause I got rift, pushed off a cliff. With my attaché, I'll rise again, but until then, I'll work for Amway. Okay, everybody, it's midterm exam time. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you four years ago when we played Double or Nothing on the National Debt. If you recall back then, you guessed wrong and you lost. So see if you can do a little better this time with the stakes twice as high, okay? On what must Congress spend your nation's wealth? Synthetic fuel! No! Public health! No, you must make more selective nominations. School nutrition? No. Higher education! Higher education? What a ridiculous idea! I thought I saw him wearing pink out in Harvard Square earlier today, too. Immense expense. <laughs> I'm supposed to use a teleprompter, not you. Okay. Is mainly in defense. <laughs> Again? Immense expense is mainly in defense. I think he's got it. I think he's got it. Immense expense is mainly in defense. My jerks have got it. <laughs> Now, once again, how big is this expense? It's immense, it's immense. And where does this spending make sense? Defense, defense. Immense expense is mainly in defense. Everybody! Immense expense is mainly in defense. I can't hear you. Now, everybody, how big is this expense? It's immense, it's immense. And where does this spending make sense? Defense, defense, immense expenses mainly in defense. Dave Lincoln.